the Mount Rushmore for the most iconic or influential, better word, influential NBA players. So we're not talking about the Mount Rushmore. We're not talking about best. We're talking about influential. What is the Mount Rushmore for the four players that changed like, the game? We the most? Define influence, though. And I'm going to tell you mine, which will help you determine yours, most likely. So I say on my Mount Rushmore, I have Michael Jordan. He's the main character of all main characters, right? That's the guy. I have Steph Curry, three-point revolution. The whole league is jacking up 10 more threes than they did like five years ago per game because of Steph Curry shooting. Uh, I say LeBron James, that player empowerment stuff, that all started from a man when he did that thing from Cleveland to Miami. It kind of almost low-key may ruin everybody, but is doing his thing. And then number four is a tricky one for a lot of people, even a little tricky for me because I could say maybe Allen Iverson for his cultural impact. Um, but – I'm putting I'm gonna put Magic Johnson. I'm putting hee hee. I'm putting him because Magic Johnson, them boys were on take delay before Magic Johnson came in. And when Magic Johnson came in, the finals, the NBA, all that exploded. So those are my four most influential players. Those are four players that need to happen in the NBA's history for it to be where it's at right we, now. We we agree on everything but one. Yeah, there's Magic. gonna be always one. The magic. magic. One? Yeah, yeah, the magic one. So I, I agree. It's it's LeBron, like not in any order, but LeBron, Steph, Jordan. For me, I think it's Larry Bird. Because I think Larry Bird. Bible, that's I th- funny. I, I ain't gonna say the joke. I was gonna say <laughs> no, Go the, the reason. The reason. I, there's a no, reason I picked. Answer. There's a reason that I picked Larry Bird over Magic. Okay. It's because okay. Larry Bird showed a generation of players that you don't like. That being from the country and like being in like certain situations, like living on a farm. He's a farmer. Even you have the chance to be incredible at basketball. He showed a whole generation this. And, I mean, to this day, Larry Bird, when you when you see the interviews with, like, NBA players that played with him, they're like, that's the biggest shit talker that I've ever heard in my life. And they'll be like, that's, they'll be like, that's the first shit talker I've ever heard talking a country-ass accent and get to me. <laughs> You fucking trash. Yeah. <laughs> you trash, motherfucker. <laughs> nah. He tell you what he's going to do when he do it It's to you. It's Larry Bird. Magic Johnson is, is close, but for me, it's just Larry Bird because he showed, like, I think Magic Johnson and LeBron had a similar thing with the player empowerment and knowing what you're worth and, like, knowing what you want. I think mm-hmm. they have a similar thing. I think Larry Bird just showed a generation of people that, like, no matter where, like, I came from the farm. Like, you can come from anywhere and play basketball. Like, it, it doesn't matter. And, like, a lot of players have done that, but, like, who comes from a goddamn farm? So, mine is – uh, I got – mine's a little different from y'all, too. Uh, first, I'm going to start with the obvious. MJ uh, revolutionized just a number, 23, and his shoe is probably, like, the most iconic basketball – you know, Streetwear, it is, or, it is know, the most what they call it. Yeah. They're like literally the most iconic. They keep doing it. My next guy who was gonna be somebody's gonna shock you probably Shaq. I think Shaq's probably the most influential because from a business side, he's a powerhouse. Yeah, and I'm not, not mad only at that. because he not only does he Sorry. invest in companies, he's like the spokesperson of companies, no matter his age. He, and every, he's on what general commercials, Papa John's, uh like he, he, everything that man got pregnancy test. What he on? The printers. His bag is crazy, and he and he he does. He's in the comedy side. So like from a business aspect, for an athlete in general, Shaq is very influential. Uh, obviously, I'm a I'm gonna put Dirk. Dirk is probably one of the most influential, <laughs> of course, for the <laughs> for basketball being uh reach European. reaching the Europeans Born. and also he's the reason why we're now having like uh one of the reasons why we have like big man shooting probably the reason and now like you can't like at least touch the court unless you um you can move for one or you got you have to be able to shoot you have at least a, like a solid jumper and then Steph uh Steph Steph's impact is like beyond this man has changed like Everyone panicked <laughs> when he came into the league and immediately went to the high racing and fast tempo and just checking up shots for basketball. Influenced your team where y'all just missed so many threes and didn't even take a damn midi. Like y'all was too scared to, you know, take a foot in. He just showed like how efficient, like, oh, just chuck up the three instead he of He has to take three. a shot at you at any chance. <laughs> no, but no, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Though. I'm going to tell you this. Though. No, I'm just saying, like, it, it, it did have an influence on him, though. And, and, and I'm going to tell you this, though. It, they originated from Mike D'Antoni's sons. 
the yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But right. yeah. they didn't have the plot for success. The Warriors, <laughs> the first team that showed that you can have plot and shoot these threes. We just followed the Suns. We just followed and just hyper up the Suns essentially, <laughs> but it didn't work because we can't face. You know, Steph Curry and Clay Thompson too most efficient, and then Kevin Durant. Yeah. All right, man. Who's next? <laughs> Who's next, bro? Before I get into a tangent, Austin uh, or Mauricio? I had a pretty much, pretty much the same list as you, Jesse. Um, mm. Michael Jordan, obviously. You know, we've stated over and over, um, and Steph Curry, of course. Um, you know, you just go to any basketball court nowadays, and the kids are all pulling up from. Deep, Deep, you know, it's, it's just Already ridiculous. Um, LeBron as well. Um, I think, uh, especially with what you said, uh, about the super teams or you know, assembling going to a different team and, and teaming up with other superstars, I think the that's Eagles. very, yeah, very, um, very influential as well. Um, and then uh, honestly, for the fourth one, it, it's it's a toss up for me between, um, like you said, magic. Um, and I think uh, it's, it's kind of tough, but Tim Duncan. No, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pull a, a Lewis. Um, I mean, can we put coaches in there? Maybe I'll put pop up there. I bet you gotta um, put these players. What, what about AI? You, you think, you think. <laughs> AI, people, yeah, people say, for sure. People say, yeah, definitely. Because yeah. the hip hop culture in the NBA was, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. from him. But he's my own base. And, and he was, and David Stern was trying to stop that so much, and he was not giving that way. That, that man released crazy. a whole album. He had a whole album. He was about to release. <laughs> David Stern said, "Do not release that. You're not releasing that. <laughs> you cannot release that That's album. There's crazy, no way you're gonna bro. ruin my product." <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So you say Magic? <laughs> you join? You join the Magic side with me? Um. Probably magic, yeah. I mean, I you could also put Kobe there, in my opinion, because for about seven years, all I heard people saying when they took a shot of anything, whether it was paper, Kobe, or Kobe. gum, anything thrown into a trash can to a basketball hoop, it was Kobe. I remember Kobe. I heard a motherfucker say that shit when he was throwing a football, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I couldn't even say anything about it. I was like, yeah, Kobe, like, you're going to make it. <laughs> yeah, F it, Kobe. That, Kobe to me is like, F it. Like, yeah, I don't really care. I'm going to shoot it. And but three people on me, it's fine. It'll go in right. Uh, Ozzy, how are you feeling, bro? Who's your four? Yeah, so it's pretty much similar. to it's. I think it's a combination of what you and what um, Lewis said. So for me, um, of course, you know, touched on Jordan. Um, for me, yeah, so Jordan, uh, LeBron, Steph, and – so, yeah, it was those three. And then, yeah, like the fourth one is kind of like a toss up. Um, I would lean I would lean towards I would lean towards Shaq, like really mm-hmm. just in terms of like, especially like at his peak, like how he just dominated the game like on the court. Like when it was like him and Kobe, like that was just something I know, like not necessarily like maybe like influence wise, but just in terms of like impact on the game. Like I think those four guys and with LeBron and the player empowerment and ultimately with LeBron, he's like the ultimate, he's the ultimate floor raiser of talent in a way. Like you look at like what he was doing with those Cleveland teams, like those eight straight runs and stuff. And even like, like the end, like the tail end of Miami, when the team was falling apart, he was just like, he just is just give him four guys and he he's, like in his prime, he he's gonna take you there. Now he may not go over the top, you know, because of the competition. Ten straight years, ten straight yeah. years. So, um, and then you know, of course, you know, Steph, like he's just fundamentally changed how we changed how we play the game. Like he's a you know a system unto unto himself. Like it's more than just it's not it's not even just the shooting on the ball, but it's, it's you know it's the off ball movement, it's the cutting, the finishing. Like he's always even at even at 35, he's still he's not what he used to be, but he's still playing at like a like a super. He's still main character. Still, yeah. still main character, boy. You still gotta. Hey, he's gonna you know gonna be on his list soon, right? Mauricio Wemby, right? Seven foot tall, <laughs> two threes, got handles. Freak oh of gosh. nature, eight foot wingspan. Oh, he's gonna be, be on this list. Huh? You get ten my, years. My boy Dirk got the most iconic fadeaway. Everyone's incorporated into that game now. Ask KD. With the one leg, how I create space. Better ask somebody. Man. 
I hype your man. I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hype your man up, bro. Hey, um, 